if you have even a little bit too much, most metals lower testosterone when you dig into the research studies. Calcium, magnesium, boron, and zinc, they're exceptions. Let's talk about zinc. Our muscles have an incredibly high percentage of our body's total zinc at 49.5% micrograms of zinc per gram of wet weight. This 49.5% is even higher than our bones, which are only at 36.7% micrograms of zinc per gram of wet weight. What this indicates is zinc is incredibly important for muscle performance, but not only that, zinc is also vital for your bones, for your brain, for your eyes, skin, heart, etc., etc. And don't forget about your reproductive system. I, can, I emphasize reproduction here because one of the most noticeable aspects of increasing your body's zinc levels is zinc increases testosterone production for men and women. Remember, women have less testosterone than men, but women still have more testosterone than they have estrogen throughout their entire lives on average. You can see that here in this study when you make the units the same from the blood tests. T stands for testosterone, E2 stands for estradiol, the main estrogen in men and women. And zinc is noticeable because people feel a testosterone boost when they supplement zinc if they're zinc deficient, like when you're a vegan. This noticeable feeling of your testosterone elevating is why foods high in animal versions of zinc, like oysters and red meat, they're considered aphrodisiacs. Remember, our muscle is red meat, and red meat is full of zinc, a huge percentage. So it stands to reason that other animal meats are also packed with zinc. And when you eat those meats, you get a blast of zinc, and ultimately a blast of testosterone, which further helps our bodies make more muscle to store more zinc. And bone density improves too. It's the same type of zinc we have in our bodies, the zinc found in meat. So that zinc is readily absorbed into our bodies. Now this is a general theme when you, when you dig deep into learning about vitamins. Animal versions of vitamins are more available to your body than plant versions. Most companies don't want to admit that because it's cheaper to isolate vitamins from plants. So they advertise vegan supplements or plant-based supplements as if that's a positive thing. But it's actually a negative thing. Of course, plant-based supplements are better than petroleum-based supplements with petroleum-based impurities, so there's that. But animal-based versions of supplements are always the best of the best because we are animals, we are not plants. But what about the plants? Well, most plants have very little zinc to start with. They don't need as much zinc because they don't have muscles, and plants also don't have bones, so they don't need as much. And because plants have very low levels of zinc, this is why vegans are known to have low zinc levels, which we'll talk about shortly. But even a few plants that have a good amount of zinc, like oats, the zinc in those plants is less bioavailable. Zinc from animal products like red meat is far more bioavailable to compared to plant forms of zinc due to a few reasons. First, zinc in animal products is the same stuff you have in your body, like I said, so obviously it's more compatible with your body. Second, Various fiber and other plant compounds bind the zinc and cause us to eliminate out the back end. The plant-based zinc gets passed out in our stools. And you probably already know this, but keep in mind that animals have zero dietary fiber in our bodies. Dietary fiber is plant material that's undigestible. But anyway, besides just zinc sticking to fiber and being passed out in our stools, the major zinc binding protein in plants is called phytate, also known as phytic acid. Phytic acid is a natural plant compound, and it severely decreases intestinal zinc bioavailability. In fact, phytates are regarded as the main nutritional inhibitor of zinc absorption into our bodies. The major one. Meat, including oysters and seafood, but especially red meat, which again is what our bodies are made of, of course, doesn't have any phytates. Meat has zero phytates. This is why when you dig into the research on this, you find zinc bioavailability in vegan diets is only about 30% or less. Furthermore, even mixed diets with plants and meat, you see lower zinc absorption because the zinc from the meat gets stuck onto the phytates from the plants. And once again, 
it just goes out your rear end in the stools. This is further illustrated by the fact that refined grains have 26 to 34 percent of zinc that is available to our bodies, but unrefined grains, the types of grains that the government recommends, the government recommended diets are always pushing, the whole grains, these actually have only about 18 to 26 percent bioavailable zinc. In other words, the more fiber and the more phytic acid the grains have, the more that the zinc ends up in your stool stuck to all that fiber material and the less zinc you get into your body. Here, it's interesting to note that the addition of milk and other dairy products to a vegan diet actually increases zinc availability for our bodies, but zinc intake from plants plus dairy is still gonna be lower than a person eating more meats and seafoods, of course. I'm not saying you should only eat meat here, but I am saying don't be afraid of meat or animal products that have all the correct vitamins and all the correct ratios that your body needs. And watch my video on cholesterol if you're worried about raising your cholesterol when you eat more animal products, which does happen with higher meat consumption. And raising your cholesterol is another benefit of eating more animal-based foods. Anyway, it shouldn't be surprising then that compared to non-vegetarians, male and female vegetarians, have lower dietary zinc intakes because plants don't have that much to begin with and veget vegetarians have lower blood serum zinc concentrations meaning they have less in their bodies. Vegetarians don't eat as much zinc and the stuff they do end up ends up in their end up eating ends up in their stools at a much higher percentage as I said before. This is further illustrated when we look at foods highest in zinc. You mainly find oysters and other seafood and red meats and oats are the one plant that tends to be somewhat high in zinc. And of course, a few enriched foods where they're, they're adding synthetic zinc to the foods. And for the record, enriching foods with the zinc usually means they add metal shavings of zinc, which isn't ideal if you have a sensitive gut lining. It's similar to iron. You don't want metal shavings of iron. You want forms of minerals that are found in whole foods. They're gentle on your gut lining. But anyways, if we're talking about natural forms of zinc and foods highest in the natural forms, we're talking exclusively about seafoods and meats. You need to, to basically get past the top 100 animal product foods to find zinc in plant foods. That's how low zinc is in plants. So don't assume you're getting enough zinc if you lean vegetarian, if you tend to be a vegetarian. Now let's switch gears and talk about zinc supplements. When I did a video on magnesium, I looked at the number of studies that did a head-to-head -head comparison with magnesium threonate versus magnesium citrate and magnesium malate and gluconate and glycinate and things like that. Unfortunately, nobody has done full-scale head-to-head studies like that with zinc. Researchers have done some studies uh, comparing a couple types of zinc for a couple of different health related issues, but nobody has done a thorough comparison of supplementing a number of different types of zinc supplements and then following through with tests to see how much zinc ends up in people's bodies, like a loading test or something like that. But here's what I can say. If you're going to supplement zinc, my favorite form is zinc carnosine. That's because this type of zinc is derived from meat, the type of zinc found in your muscle. And as you can imagine, the word carnosine comes from the Latin word muscle or meat, carno. And a ton of studies show zinc carnosine is excellent with a wide range of health benefits like anti-inflammation, antioxidation, antioxidant functions, and gut mucosal lining improvements, which is interesting. In other words, the zinc carnosine literally has been shown to strengthen the gut lining rather than stressing it out. And I've heard numerous complaints about other types of zinc supplements where people take the supplements like zinc oxide and it gives them acid reflux because, or they feel like they have acid reflux because the zinc is a metal and metals tend to be harsh if you blast them into your system with an unnatural form, like I said before. Again, this is the importance of zinc in the most natural forms, the stuff your body has, the zinc L-carnosine. Not only does that not feel like it's giving you acid reflux when you take it, it is mucoprotective and it's even used to treat ulcers and it's been used uh, for the prevention and cure of various types of intestinal damage, colitis, ulcers uh, that are usually caused by doctors messing up your stomach lining when they stick a scope in there. 
Plus, zinc carnosine even has benefits for hemorrhoids and intestinal permeability, also known as leaky gut, but it's not a band-aid for a poor diet. A lot of people want to take a pill for their poor diets and keep eating junk, and zinc pills aren't going to do that, but if you happen to need a zinc supplement, the zinc carnosine is best. So again, rather than amplifying gut issues, the carnosine, the animal form of zinc, which again, you can get from eating meat, this zinc actually helps heal your gut lining. Now the final question here is, what is the recommended daily intake? Or even better, what is the optimal amount of zinc you should have per day? Well, if we go over to the Linus Pauling Institute summary on zinc, the RDA, the recommended daily allowance for adults, is about 10 milligrams per day, and about two milligrams for infants, and that's all listed here. Now keep in mind though that vegetarians need 50% more zinc per day because of all the issues we talked about before where their bodies aren't absorbing the zinc. So vegetarians need at least 15 milligrams per day. Furthermore, things like sweating or alcohol intake or bowel disorders or even your body size can change your intake needs. So if you're an athlete that sweats hard and your goal is to increase muscle mass, you should load up on zinc. Probably take 50 milligrams if you're a high performing athlete. If you have gut issues, you should probably do a DNA consult with AJ Consulting Company so we can fix that. But also, you may need to take extra supplements for a while, including zinc carnosine at 50 milligrams per day. But most people can just eat meat. It's also good here to keep in mind that copper, calcium, and iron intake can change your intake needs for zinc. Uh, and if you eat meat, you generally don't need to worry about any of these ratios because meat has the correct ratios when you eat meat. But when I recommend zinc supplements, I usually recommend zinc with copper, but not too much copper because that can build up in your body if you start getting crazy with that. But zinc plus copper is good. I'm less worried about taking zinc with calcium because the research isn't convincing on this point. And the mention here of folate and vitamin A on this page, they're just saying zinc is especially important for those vitamins, so it's not something to worry about. Assuming you understand your MTHFR genes and your BCO1 genes, things like that, which I go over during a DNA consult relating to vitamin A and folic acid and folate. Anyway, I hope this helps you understand your zinc needs and the best way to get zinc in your diet, whether you need to supplement, because you're a vegetarian or you eat a lot of meat and seafood, similar to your ancestors did for the past thousands of years. And keep in mind, approximately 2,800 human proteins bind to zinc, so it's not just vitamin A and folate that are dependent on zinc. It's important, especially for your muscles and your testosterone, and your gut is lined with muscles that help move food down your digestive tract, so that's related here, but it's important for overall health, a lot of things, thousands of things. And again, keep in mind, Zinc helps raise your free testosterone, but if you already have optimal levels, you're good to go. There will always be nuance with these sorts of topics because people have different genetic needs and different intakes at the start of these studies. And the supplement companies want everybody buying their products, even when you don't need any, because your diet is excellent. But one thing I can say for sure, zinc is amazing. Be sure you're getting your optimal intakes.